Brian reads our, our verse of the day here. Travis's favorite, huh, buddy? Okay. Uh, a verse that we've read on more than a couple of occasions here at Step 7. Uh, the, the, the prophet Jeremiah, who's in Jerusalem right now, is, is writing this letter to the exiles in, in Babylon. And they're going to be in Babylon for, for 70 years, we, we read here. I've always found it hard to read verse 11 without reading the, the next two verses, 12 and 13. So, verse 11, again, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And then in verse 12, it says, Then you will call upon me and pray, and I will listen to you. And then verse 13 says, You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with some of your heart, most, most of your heart, all of your heart. Okay. Whenever I read these three verses, I, I almost see the, the, full, the full gospel there, the good news of the gospel. It starts off by God telling us that he has a plan for us, okay? And it's a plan to give us hope and a future and not to harm us. That's, that's wonderful news. And then the next news that we see in 12, once we have received this, this notion in our, in our minds and in our hearts, once we recognize this good news, the next natural thing for us to do is to come to him. In prayer. And then it finishes off verse 12 with, it says, and I will listen to you. God says, I will listen to you. And then he tells me, and you know what, you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Okay. Verse 11 lets us know that God wants to bless us. And we see that all throughout Scripture. God wants to bless you. That is the, the foundation of this, this message today. His desire to bless us. Okay? Let's, uh, let's have another prayer here. Father God, Lord, I, I thank you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this group of friends. I thank you for allowing us to gather and to worship you. And right now, Lord, as I always do, I want to ask that you would please speak through me. Help me to just step aside and get out of the way and hopefully give your message. And we just love you, Lord, and we thank you and we pray this as we always do in that wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's start right off, you guys, with some scripture. Turn to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, that would be at the front of the Bible. <laughs> okay, that's the, uh, the first book and the first chapter. And I'm going to read verses 26 through 28, and just a little background here. We're talking about the week of creation as we read it in, uh, in Genesis. And we're actually talking about the sixth day here. So everything has been created. The, the moon and the stars, the, the light has been created, the creatures have been created. They were actually created on this same day, on this sixth day. And now we're looking at God says, you know what, let's create man. Let's create man and woman, okay? Look at verse 26. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then finally, verse 28. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. 
rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So we see something really cool in these three verses. First of all, we, we go back to 26. And it, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. Who, who is this us, you suppose, here? It's the Trinity. It's the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us make man. The next thing that I, I really love is I asked the question a couple minutes ago. What's the first thing God said to us? He says to be fruitful, but he also says to rule. Okay? And notice we're talking about God's blessing on us today. He starts off in verse 28. After he's created them, what's the first thing he does? He blesses them. God blessed them and said to them to be fruitful. So he blesses us right out of the gate. First thing, God blesses us. And then he says, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule. I find that fairly powerful. He starts with a directive. He says, you are to rule. He sets us apart from all creation. Everything's been created. Then we come around. Then he blesses us. And then he says, you are to rule. You're in charge. I love that. We are in charge. So today I ask you, where is it that you rule? What is your circle of influence. And maybe today, it's just the person in the mirror, the man in the mirror, the lady in the mirror. Maybe that's your circle of influence. And you know what? That's okay. But don't kid yourself. To serve God is to reign. It's to rule. Okay? We are to rule the kingdom, the, the territory that he has granted us. And maybe that's just us for the time being. But we are to be faithful, my friends, to what it is that he has given us. Okay? To serve God is to reign. It's to rule. It's the first thing he tells us. I love that. I tie it into our, one of our, our values here at Step 7. We, we have these, these values that Brian teaches just about every quarter. And one of them is purpose. Purpose. What is your purpose? Okay. Why did, uh, why did you get out of bed this morning? Turn, please, to your right. Not too far. Go to the book of Chronicles. First Chronicles. It's, it's past First and Second Kings. First Chronicles chapter 4. If you, if you get to Ezra or Nehemiah, you've, you've gone too far. Right past Kings. Pardon me? Second Chronicles. <laughs> okay. That makes sense, Brian. First Chronicles chapter 4. And I'll tell you, I can't remember the last time I even, I don't preach out of Chronicles. It just doesn't happen. Okay. And, um, especially here in 1 Chronicles. The first, the first nine chapters of 1 Chronicles is, in my mind, some of the most boring scriptures there is. Okay, I'll just be honest with you. I don't go there. Okay, in my, in my yearly readings, when I'm reading through the Bible, I get to 1 Chronicles, and I have to be honest with you, I usually skip the first night. <laughs> it's very boring. It's like watching Petra. 
it's a bunch of, it's a genealogy, okay, it's just a bunch of names, okay, it goes from Adam to Abraham, and then it goes from Abraham through the tribes of Jacob, and then it goes all the way up to David and Saul, and I just, I just don't read it. <laughs> There's a little part, though, in chapter 4 that just jumps off the page at me, and it's known as the Prayer of Jabez. We have this guy named Jabez, who we, we really don't know a lot about him at all. We don't know anything about this guy. But all of a sudden, in 1 Chronicles 4, this tiny little prayer comes up. And um, I'll read in verse 9. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. And the word Jabez sounds like the Hebrew word for, for pain. It's not real specific, but uh, we'll go with that. Verse 10. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted this request. I absolutely love that little prayer. I say that prayer every day. How many times? I don't know, but more than once. I've kind of tweaked it. I've added to it a little bit. But I say that prayer every day. Oh, that you would bless me, Lord. It's what we're talking about today. And enlarge my territory. And that your hand would be with me. That's beautiful. Not my way, but your way. Give me wisdom. Give me courage. Give me strength. Keep your hand upon me. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory and that your hand would be with me. And then it goes on to say, and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. In my prayer, I say, and keep me from evil. So I will not be in pain or cause any pain. I say that prayer every day. You guys, I say it when I get in my car. I say it who knows how many times. But I just picked it up again a couple months ago. And that's when I started thinking about maybe giving this message here today, the prayer of the best. And I want to I wanna go back a little bit and tell you a story. Back in, in 2000, a, a gentleman by the name of Bruce Wilkinson, he wrote a book, some of you have probably heard of it. It's called The Prayer of Jabez. Okay? It was published in 2000. It has sold over 10 million copies. Okay? It's about 90 pages long. And it's all about the fruit that has come from people's lives by committing to this prayer of Jabez. You can read it in a sitting. You can read it in a, in a sitting. But in about 2002, I read this book and I started praying this prayer. Okay. And at that point in my life, I wasn't quite a pastor. I was working on it. I was almost a pastor. Okay. I was a head deacon in my church. Um, and I was soon to be a pastor. Not too many of you knew me. Kirk knew me. The McLeans knew me. Um, I had this wonderful opportunity to go to Rwanda with, with World Vision. And I went with about 25 or 30 pastors. And we went to Rwanda, and I'll never forget this day. It was my birthday. And it was a Saturday night. And we were having dinner, and the head guy from World Vision said, Oh, guys, by the way, tomorrow we're going to send you all off to individual churches, and you you need to give the sermon, okay? I'm thinking, oh my word, you're kidding me. Now, I've done a little bit of preaching at that point in time, but not a lot. And the, the guy says, he says, oh, by the way, here in this area of Rwanda, the church services, they usually last about three hours. <laughs> And I'm just, I'm freaking out. I'm like, I can't, what am I going to do? I don't have anything prepared for tomorrow. 
So I spent the whole night almost, and the, the power went out in this little motel that we were staying at. And I'm, I'm up all night long with a flashlight in my mouth, and I'm trying to put together a message for the next day. And sure enough, the next day came around, and I went to the church that, that I was assigned to, and, and we had a wonderful time. It was a great bunch of people. And at the end of my message, I, I let them know. I said, you know, folks, I'm not, a, I'm not a pastor, but I'm working on it. And I said, hopefully someday I'll be back, and I can, I can see you all again. Well, lo and behold, a little over a year later, I had the opportunity to go back to Rwanda. And I was a pastor at that point. And this time I was ready, because I knew, you know, they were probably going to spring this on everybody again. I had, a, I had a sermon in my back pocket. I was ready to go, okay? And sure enough, we had dinner one Saturday night, and they, they told everybody, you got to preach tomorrow. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could go back to the same church that I went to. But I didn't want to say anything about it. I thought about asking them, could I go back there, but I didn't want to say anything. I thought I'd just let the chips fall. It was about a 25, 30 to 1 shot that I would get to go back. But you can imagine what happened. I got to go back to the same church. And it was just awesome. I showed up and everybody remembered me and you know, they just, they treated me like a rock star. It was awesome. And I got to preach again. And that night, I went home and I, I was overwhelmed with what the Lord had, had done here. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. I was blessed with the opportunity to go halfway across the world two times and preach at this little church in Rwanda. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. I was thinking about this earlier today, and I even talked with Matt a little bit out in the, in the foyer. Um, you would expand my territory. And I, I think about some of the guys here that have done time, and there's more than a couple, have done some serious time. And I would ask you to think about that right now. How has God enlarged your territory these last few years? What did your territory look like three years? Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory, Lord. I, I want to ask you to, to do me a favor, to do yourself a favor. First Chronicles 4.10, it's one verse. I want to ask you to commit that to memory. And then I want to ask you to pray on a daily basis for a couple of reasons. One of them, because God wants to bless you. But the second one is a little bit selfish, at least as far as I'm concerned. I, I'm always thinking about step seven. I would ask that as you're saying this, this prayer, that you would keep step seven in mind that you would keep in mind the fact that we need his blessing here at Step 7. And I know that Jesus is crazy about this ministry. He loves this ministry. All I have to do is look around the room, and I know that Jesus loves this ministry. But give some thought to how your prayer might also spill over to, uh, to Step 7. You said 410, right? 410. First Chronicles 4.10, yeah. It's the prayer of Jabez. And I, I want you to know that I, I bought 25 of these. 
And I want every man in the homes to get one. Every guy who lives in the homes, one of these is reserved for you. But we've got 25 of them, so if, if someone else wants one, you're, you're free to take it. I would ask that you maybe just take one per household or something. We have 25 of them. If we need more, Brian will holler at me and we will get some more and we will get it to you. But I would ask that you please read this book. And something I would kind of warn you about, back when this book first came out, there was a little bit of, of controversy over the fact that this is just going down that road of the prosperity gospel, okay? This is all about the prosperity gospel. Name it and claim it. And that's not the case, folks. That is not the case at all. We see in the prayer here, he says this prayer, and, and what does God do? It says, and God granted his request. God loves this prayer. I would ask you, please, I've set a date in my calendar for three months down the road. I want you all to get involved with this prayer of Jabez. And in three months, during our praise time here at church, part of that praise time is we're going to ask you, how has he expanded your territory? Does this work for you? Okay? It works for everybody that gets involved with it, I promise you. But please understand, as I said, this isn't the prosperity gospel. It's not up to us to figure out what it looks like to have my territory expanded, okay? That's up to him. It's not about filling my bank account, getting that job, finding that person in my life. It's up to God how he is going to expand our territory. And we need to be okay with that. You know, my friends, these, this past two weeks, we've looked at a couple of prayers. Last week, we, we focused in on wisdom. James chapter 1, where it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who will do what? Give generously. Okay. He will give generously. We know that God likes that prayer. And I believe with all of my heart that God loves this prayer, or it wouldn't have made it into Scripture. Okay? Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory and that your hand would be upon me and that you would keep evil away so I wouldn't be in pain or cough. It takes all of about five to ten seconds to spit that out. Do it from your heart. I believe that Jesus loves that prayer. Okay? So please, please remember today that the first thing God says to us in Scripture is that we are to rule, we are to reign over the territory that He has given us. We are to be faithful in what it is He has given us. But please remember that before He did that, it's obvious to all of us that God wants to bless you. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you for so many things. And today, Lord, we thank you for the fact that you long to bless us. It's the first thing you did after creating us. And then you gave us this directive that we are to be in charge. Help us to be in charge through listening to you, Lord. Do, please, expand all of our territories, but do it in the way, obviously, that you would have it be done. Help us to recognize that you do have a purpose for each and every one of us. And help us to have a greater impact in that purpose. And we just thank you, Lord. We love you, and we, we lift up our prayers, we lift up our petitions, we lift up our praises, Lord, always. 
in that precious, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.